Thank you so much for being with us today, Raylan. Um, so Raylan uh, quickly dazzled fans in her freshman year, scoring more goals than anyone else on her team and being named the Pac-12 Freshman of the Year. She then turned the heat up last year, making history, becoming the first ever college athlete to sign an NIL deal with Nike. Um, so I have a bunch of questions for you today, Raylan. So let's just get right into it. So, you know, on the 50th anniversary of Title IX, we're looking back. Clearly, it paved the way for all women's sports athletes to have the opportunities they have today, um, whether it's honestly in or out of sports. I know that Title IX has paved the way for me, um, you know, and, and I'm curious how Title IX has paved the way for you. Obviously, it's given you the opportunity to play soccer at UCLA, but I'd love to hear in your own words how it's impacted your life. Yeah, um, obviously, without Title IX, I wouldn't be at UCLA today. Um, being able to have a scholarship is the only reason why I'm able to go to such an amazing school, because without getting a scholarship, I probably wouldn't be at a good college. And um, so having uh, college sports paving the way for my education and allowing me to further my education has been a really, really big impact on my life. And not only that, but with college sports, you build so many connections, whether that's your teammates, your coaches, your support staff, um, people who are in your community. For me, being in LA, it's been a really big part of um, building connections. Well, obviously, Wasserman, my agency, they have so many connections within other sports. And um, I would say that that um, is a big part of kind of what comes with college at athletics. And, you know, my whole life, I'm sure a bunch of people would agree that college sports is what you work towards your whole life. Me growing up playing youth sports, AYSO, going into high school, those were all steps that I was taking to get to college soccer. So without Title IX, there wouldn't even be like an end goal. I would probably, I probably wouldn't be playing soccer right now. And I think that that also plays a part in youth sports and the competitiveness of youth sports because the objective is to get recruited, to go to a good college, to, you know, set yourself up for the future. And I think that, you know, without there being any college sports for women, I would probably be, you know, just working a job, like trying to go get classes on the side. Like I just, I would not be where I am at today without Title IX. And um, yeah, I would say this also sets you up like if you want to play professionally. And I just, none of this would be possible if I wasn't able to, if anybody wasn't able to get a scholarship for any women's sports out there, so. Absolutely. Um, and the opportunity is incredible, but just because you get an opportunity obviously doesn't make the journey easy. Um, and balancing schoolwork, athletics, um, and just being a human being the rest of the areas of your life, and particularly, we're going to get into it in a second, NIL now, um, you know, I imagine is a lot to say the least. And, you know, I'm curious what you sort of think that people should know about the college athlete experience, particularly for you at a school where the academics and the athletics are so elite? It is definitely challenging already just being a student athlete. You think of just college students and you think of how much is on their plate and then you add a whole nother life on top of that. And you have to balance, you know, waking up every morning early, going to weights, going to practice, watching film, um, recovery. And then you think, oh, like they're also doing everything that other kids are doing on top of that, like homework, turning in assignments at midnight, like waking up, doing projects. Like I don't think people really realize how much work it is to be a student athlete. And then now with this other layer on top of that with NIL, it's, it's definitely challenging to balance. Um, and I think it's really important to have a 
support system behind you that backs you up and that kind of takes some of that stress off. Um, for me, having my mom, my agent, my agency, like they they really help me like, you know, take the load off of me because they know it's not it's not a professional athlete. Like it's a college student and it's a college athlete. So they have, you know, other things to focus on aside from just sports. So I think that this whole, this new NIL um, opportunity is really kind of giving student athletes a way to set up their own future. But also what comes along with that is balancing different um, responsibilities. So I think it's, it's definitely new, but it is, it's something to kind of take slow and really, really understand what that what comes along with that. And I mean, I know that mental health has been such a major topic of conversation, I think everywhere, but particularly in college sports. Um, and given these stresses, these pressures, you know, have you found ways to protect your own mental health? Um, I know you just mentioned, obviously, a support system, which is huge, but sort of, you know, what are some other ways that, that you're protecting yourself? Yeah. So like I said, it is very challenging having this additional layer on top of what, you know, you're already doing in your life and it can be pretty overwhelming at times. So, you know, really having that support system, like I said, that, you know, is in your corner and they understand that you have other things going on. And I know for me, Sometimes it's okay to take a step back and be like, you know, I can't take on this other project. Like I have a lot going on, you know, it's finals week or it's preseason, whatever it may be like, and having the right people who understand that and they, they help you out. So like, I know a couple of times I've had to say like, you know, like I can't take this on, like I have a lot going on and just having those people who understand that and because, you know, NIL is, is new to everyone. So we're all trying to figure it out. And um, it's definitely going to be a journey. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think just having that support system and, and knowing that you can talk to people. Because sometimes you take on too much too much that you actually you can. Because, you know, it's hard to say no sometimes. So I think that knowing that it's okay to put yourself first and then also having those people who you know you can reach out to if things start to get overwhelming. I think that's really important. Well, one of the journeys that you did take on, obviously, is signing with Nike. Um, And I would love if you could take us back to the moment that, um, you know, I, I actually don't know if they reached out to you, if you reached out to them. What was the process like of getting that deal done? Um, so basically last summer is when the whole NIL thing started and I wasn't too big about it. I was just thinking like, this is a great opportunity for college sports and college athletes all across the board. And I was like, Oh, you know, this is like a really good opportunity. I don't know if I'm going to dive into it, but it's, it's always there. So, um, me and my mom were talking about it like, Oh, like, you know, let's just go have a meeting with Wasserman see how it goes. There's really no harm in doing it. And, you know, we had the meeting, I eventually signed with them. And like the morning after I signed with them, my agent reached out to my mom and said, Oh, you know, like a, a company is interested. And I, my mom didn't tell me which company because she didn't want me to like, get excited or get my hopes up. But um, it all happened pretty fast. And honestly, it still doesn't feel real. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, that process started the day after I signed with Wasserman and then you know we just kept going back and forth and started to build that relationship and build that bond up until you know I finally signed with Nike and it became public but yeah I think I mean anyone who's kind of debating on whether or not to jump into the NIL world you don't have to take it super you don't have to really dive into it but I think you know it's worth it's worth a shot if the only thing that can come from it is good. So, you know, if nothing happens, nothing happens. That's what I was thinking when I first kind of started the, or when I first signed with Wasserman, you know, if something happens, great. If something doesn't happen, I'm just at the same place I was before. So, um, yeah, I think this is just a great opportunity 
that I think people need to take advantage of because in my opinion, this should have been a thing a long time ago. So I think that, you know, college athletes taking advantage of that is a really, really, really big um, opportunity. So. And if I remember correctly, I remember the day that, that um, the announcement came out and I remember reading about how um, one of the reasons that Nike was so interested in you um, beyond your athletic prowess was um, some of the advocacy work that you're doing in the LA community. Um, and I think that that is so interesting and important to point out because, you know, at the beginning of the NIL era, a lot of people talked about, you know, if you don't have 50,000 followers, if you're not the quarterback at Alabama, you're not going to get interest. And not only was that not true, but a, a brand like Nike came out and said, you know, we're, we're signing with somebody who, who has a message um, and who has something that they're working towards in addition to just being an athlete and being a student. So I'm curious if, if you could tell us a little bit about that advocacy, if what those conversations were like and sort of how you feel like Nike is going to help you, um, you know, with your social work in the future. Yeah. So, you know, I get a lot of questions like, Oh, like, you know, you don't even have a lot of followers, which is true. Um, well, you have but, more you know, than me, so. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, I've gotten a lot of questions about that. But really what I'm focused on doing is is giving back to the community on a smaller scale. Um, obviously, there are student athletes out there who have thousands and thousands of followers. But my message I'm trying to send is that um, change can be, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Um, I'm kind of trying to reach out to the local areas and inspire the next generation to follow their dreams. And especially for like NIL, now that that's a thing, um, it's easier for young children to look up to college athletes and you know, growing up, me, I would always look up to, like, professional athletes and think, like, oh, like, I want to be there one day. But um, for college athletes, little kids look up to college athletes because they see their position as more of a relatable goal. And because um, we're all on the same journey to get to the top. And when they see the different steps it takes to get to the top, it makes their goals more attainable. So, um I don't know if I answered your question. I just kind of kept going. No, definitely. Absolutely. Um, I, I mean, and, and, and something else, which I feel like you're, you're also getting at, um, is kind of your approach to the NIL landscape. Because I think after the first year, um, you know, where, where everyone kind of didn't know what to expect, I, I imagine that athletes like you are sort of kind of reflecting and saying, okay, I have all these things going on, right? I have the deals that I have. Um, I have my goals and what is the ideal, you know, NIL situation for me? I think you mentioned earlier setting yourself up for the future, you know, um, and can you tell us a little bit about that approach and that goal now that you've been doing it, um, you know, since last summer? Yeah, I think it's important for student athletes to really remember like what they're doing it for. I know it, it, it's easy to just see, you know, dollar signs and say, oh, you know, this is a great deal because, you know, I'm getting X amount. But it's really important to like if you do have an agent, if you do have a support system who helps you with these deals to really make sure that they know what you stand for and make sure that they stand for that also. And because um, ultimately you're you're building your image and the image that you create is is your platform that you can then speak out with. And, you know, you want to, you want to build a good support system. You want to have a good following and it's important for, for me at least to, um, hold your beliefs and hold your values close to home. And, um, with Wazerman and my agent and my mom, of course, my support system, um, their beliefs align perfectly with my beliefs. And I think that's really important, um, uh, because I don't see all the deals coming in, um, it's the people above me. So they really know what I stand for 
and that is, you know, women's rights, equality. And so they know my values, my beliefs, and it's, it's the trust piece. Like you, you have to trust the people around you that they're going to want the best for you. And, you know, if, if those aren't the people around you, then maybe you need to do a double take and say, you know, like, I need to surround myself with people who want the best for me and who stand for the right things. And like I said, it's easy to see big money and say, oh, this is a great deal. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's what you're standing for. As far as your support system, I'm curious, um, you know, A, the role that UCLA's athletic department has has played in that, particularly with NIL, because, you know, over this past year, we've seen so many schools start to develop resources um, for NIL um, across all sports. And in your experience, like how, you know, if you if I were an athletic director um, and I said to you, you know, how do you think like we can better serve our athletes when it comes to year two of the NIL era? particularly our women's sports athletes and our non-football and basketball sports athletes, right? Um, what would you say? For the women's side? Um, so, I mean, I think something that people don't really realize is women are extremely marketable. We are the largest consumers. Um, and what people are finally starting to see is that women in sports have a voice and it's not just the, the big name, you know, like you said, like quarterback at Bama, like women athletes are starting to come up and they're starting to speak out. Like we see, you know, I mean, I'll, I'll talk about it later, but um, people are speaking out and people are seeing that and they're getting behind it. And um, you know, obviously women are known for being very present on social media, which is also a good, profitable um aspect of the women's sports side is you know they have now they have a platform that they can use and it's not only helping like my generation but it's showing the younger generation that like look this is possible and you can follow your dreams and you can have a voice and you can inspire and I think that's a really big message that um NIL is helping send and I think this might be one of our, our closing questions um, as we're coming up on time. But um, with regards, you know, NIL is is an aspect of empowerment for women sports athletes, um, you know, and in the next 50 years of Title IX, um, you know, we, we've made many strides, but we're, we're not where um, we could be. Um, I think mm-hmm. everyone agrees with that. Um, there are still vast disparities um, in resources. Um, there's still more investment to be made, more um, popularity to be had. Um, and I'm curious from your perspective, um, I, it's a two-part question, really. I mean, what do you see as sort of the challenges um, coming up for continuing to grow women's sports? Um, and also, like, what do you hope the future will bring? Because, you know, I think in this moment, we're acknowledging that we all have more work to do, but all, you know, but the future is bright, right? So um, yeah, maybe you could start with the obstacles and then hopes um, at the end. Yeah. um, I mean, as many people know, I'm a big advocate for women's rights and gender equality. And like you said, we are making big strides with NIL and with Title IX and um, I would like to see equality in the coverage aspect. Like, you know, for let's say football or men's football, obviously men's football, <laughs> football and men's basketball, it is so easy to find their games. There's so much coverage. And let's say for any women's sports, you have to go through several apps to even find a live game. And it's, it's not to the point where we should be at. And I think that in the future, hopefully we can have equality in that aspect and have equal coverage because at the end of the day, a lot of people will say, oh, you know, 
women's sports don't get enough recognition and then someone might say oh well it's because you know they don't play whatever but it's really because you look at how much coverage let's say final four for basketball gets and then you look at women's basketball and they aren't even comparable and I would say well one example of that is you look at the final four for the NCAA basketball tournament um I think it was what this two years ago I think and Sedona Prince was the one who kind of like spoke out about it and showed that the showed the difference between the women's weight room and the men's weight room for the same exact tournament and I think the women's weight room had a couple dumbbells something and the guys yeah weight room had like a whole setup and it's just without without like we're talking about having a platform Sedona had a platform and she spoke out against it and people are finally listening and no one would have known unless, unless um, she, or if she didn't speak out, no one would have even saw the inequality, but it's, it's that obvious. Like you look at their weight, the difference between the weight rooms and it's embarrassing. Like it's crazy how we don't have that much outreach about it. And I think that that's just one example about how like the facilities need to be um, equal, I guess I would say. But um, yeah, hopefully in the future, I would say facilities and coverage. um, That would be probably what, um, that would be the hopes in the future is that we see equality on the men's side and the women's side across all fronts. Absolutely. I think that's a, that's, those are some goals we can all aspire to for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, well, I think we're, we're just about out of time, but thank you so much for joining us. You, you have so much going on. Um, so I really, really appreciate it. And, um, I personally have been looking forward to this conversation for a really long time. Um, you know, uh, particularly I remember since, um, reading about your, your Nike deal. So thank you again. Thank you so much. 